Coming up on this edition of Flash Talk, brought to you by Brian Hing and Cooling, head ball coach Kenny Burns talks about the growth of his team as we head into Eastern Michigan Week. Associate head coach Mark Carney talks wide receivers in his journey to Kent State. Dr. Sean Brogheimer stops by and talks about how athletics is the front door to the university. Haley Eckerman talks about a big weekend coming up on the volleyball court. Plus, as always, we take a look around what's going on here at Kent State. That's all coming up in a flash. And welcome back inside the GFTV studios. It is another episode of Flash Talk brought to you by Brian Heating and Cooling. Dan Griffin alongside head ball coach Kenny Burns. And coach, a, a, a tough one against OU, but a lot of positives to, uh, to take away from it. Uh, another big-time game and a couple of touchdowns for Krishan McCray. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's putting together a pretty good year, I'd say. Uh, no, you know, a good learning, uh, learning uh, opportunity for our, our team. You know, we got better as a football team, but we're still a ways away. You know, I thought we played a quarter and a half of really good football, you know, and then we just got to put that accelerating the middle part together. Uh, but like I said, we're a young football team. You know, so we're learning each week how to get better. And you're seeing a lot of guys like Rashawn, Jamil, uh, you know, Justin Holmes start to kind of come into their own, which is a good sign. You mentioned starting fast. I thought you guys uh, closed strong. Uh, you, the first team this year to score in the third quarter against Ohio and then a late touchdown. But big time goal line stand. I, I know that uh, the score doesn't show that, but I mean, making four stops against a, a high powered offense like that inside the five really kind of to me, emphasizes that, that grow and respond part that you're, you're preaching. Yeah, you know, I thought we finished the game okay and pretty strong. You know, we got a late touchdown with, with Tommy in there, and our defense got the, the stop on fourth down. It's one of those deals where we just got to get that accelerate in the middle part figured out. And it, typically what's happening is there's a little bit of adversity in the middle, and we've we got to learn how to respond to that. You know, I think that's where it gets away from us. But you look at that game with about four minutes left to go in the second quarter, it's a 7-7 seven, seven ball game against the team that's really picked to win the East. You know, so we're right there. And, and the one thing I love about this football team is they continue to work. Uh, they went back to work on Sunday. Uh, they're back to work today, and they're just eager to get better. And that's what you want. Absolutely. And they get another opportunity to, to do that against Eastern Michigan, a, a team in a, led by Chris Creighton that has done really a, kind of a remarkable job and just been a mark of consistency over the last several years. Yeah, Chris does a great job. They, they, they do a good job of just playing hard and together and they're sound football team. They don't beat themselves, which is a lot of these teams don't. Uh, but we'll have, a, we'll have a total challenge going up there and trying to beat that football team. Eastern Michigan – year in and year out, game in and game out, seems to find a way just to hang around. Yeah, they're just sound. You know, they they, they run the ball on offense and they don't put their quarterback in, in dangerous situations and he's sound, he knows the system really well. Then defensively, they keep the ball in front of them, they tackle well, they limit the explosive plays. So, well, you got to come out there. We got to play well, like every week in the MAC. You got to play well. You got to play clean. You got to protect the ball, and you got to find a way to get explosive plays. This team is eager to grow and to respond and get better. So, what have have you seen as far as your your messaging, and then obviously the the result and the work that you see, but that you see behind the scenes in practice that many of us don't. That is is a mark of that. We're, we're 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 gonna we're we're figuring this out. Yeah, I think you, when you look at how they work. You know, we always talk about the how. We want to have an unconquerable will when we work and not let the, the result dictate our behavior. And you're seeing them just get back to work. And, you know, you look at who we've played right now. We've played some really good football teams. You know, UCF team that's a bowl team. Uh, uh, Arkansas, who's an SEC opponent. Then Fresno won the Mountain West. And, and Ohio won the league last year. Uh, the Eastern and Miami's picked to win it this year, I believe. So we've, we've got to see where we're at to some really good competition. And we, what we found out is that we haven't won the games, but there's been situations where we've been in it. And we've been right there, and we're not that far off. So, you know, we got some winnable games coming up here, and, and if we can put some things together, hopefully we can start putting some W's on the win column. Like you've mentioned, there are – like. You're in that game with Miami, and a couple of plays break one way or the other on, uh, with the explosive side, yeah. and we're talking about a completely different uh, result. And the same thing can be said about Ohio because for you know, up until four minutes, that's a 7-7 ball game, and then you guys drive and start right back up in the third quarter yeah. and dictate the tempo once again. And, and you can see that this team is, is starting to, like you said, figure things out and, and growing each and every week. Yeah. Yeah, we are, and we just got to keep putting our head down, getting to work. And I told him, I said, we got to get out of, out of the shoulda, coulda, woulda game and start putting some putting some results on that we, we want. But we'll never, ever put a dictate our success based on the result. Uh, we'll look at can we grow and how do we grow. Even when we win, we'll start looking at how can we get better. And I think that's what a championship culture does, and I think we're working towards that. 
And it's like the the old adage. I'll like my daughter has a shirt that says I. Be patient. I, I I grow patiently. Good things take time, and that and and you see Very that, like over, that. <laughs> over over weeks over weeks like this is taking time, and you can see the thing is really starting to grow together. Yeah, for sure. No, I I, I like that. I steal that from her. There we go. You're it, it's all yours. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be Saturday at noon on CBS Sports, and of course the Kent State Radio Network head coach Kenny Burns. Thank you as always for a few moments of your time. Yeah, thank you, and we appreciate all the support. And go flashes, Kent Grit. Welcome back inside the GFTV studios. It is Flash Talk brought to you by Brian Heing and Cooling. Dan Griffin alongside associate head coach Mark Carney. And coach, thank you for a, a few moments of your of your time. Yeah, appreciate you having me. Well, let's talk a little bit about your uh, your journey to uh, to Kent State. Now, you're familiar with Ohio. You coached at Baldwin Walsh. You're also familiar with the MAC. You coached at BG. So mm-hmm. how did the kind of the stars align and you ended up joining us here with the Golden yeah, Flashes? Yeah, uh, so Northeast Ohio is home for me. I grew up uh, in, in Lakewood just on the west side of Cleveland. Grew up played my high school ball at St. Ed's. So being a Northeast Ohio guy, uh, I've had several relatives go through uh, and get their degrees from Kent. So uh, when I got the opportunity to hook up with Coach Burns, it was a no-brainer for me to come home. Well, awesome. We're, we're glad to have you. And you work with the, the tight ends and the, the slot receivers, as you guys call them, the, the big the slots. The big slots. The big slots. That's right. Yes, sir. And, uh, well, a couple of guys have really jumped off the page. There's really been an emergence of Justin Holmes, uh, is who is a traditional tight end, and then Krishan McCray, who's – was on our show last week, and I almost equate him to a little bit like a Debo Samuel, where you just get him the ball and let him do th- do <laughs> some things. And most of the of that, most of that is out of the slot. Absolutely, no. I think those young guys are are growing into their games. They're finding out a lot about themselves. And you know, Justin played a little bit as a tight end last year. Uh, Krishan, not so much. But the emergence of those young guys to add to Hayden Junker and Luke Floria, who have, who have played a decent amount of snaps, has been really cool. Uh, I'll kind of ask you the the age old question about the the chemistry between Mike and Tommy and and those uh, and the and the brand new receivers because I mean it's no secret that this is a a brand new offensive unit especially yeah. when it comes to the the outside guy. Absolutely no, I think I think uh, you know you'd love to have and build consistency. I think it's hard in, in group of five football to do that a, a bunch uh, at least consistently. But you know the relationship and the reps that those guys get in the summertime and throughout training camp and. You know, now you're in week seven of the season. Um, there is a there is an established connection there and trust built throughout throughout time over time. Any success is that entire unit success, and that goes from the, and that goes a position by position. And that tells me that yeah, there's some friendly competition because everybody wants to start or get to the ball or, or do that. But they realize that they're all putting in the same kind of work, Absolutely. and this is and, and this is everybody's Absolutely. best result. That's the togetherness and grit, right? It's it's doing it with your teammates. It's doing it together and. You know, as you as you, um, you got to be committed to celebrating the other guy's success, right? And Luke's got to be committed to celebrating Justin's success, and Justin has to be committed to celebrating Krishan's success, and it, it's it's our success. It's a team success. It's not just one guy, right? And with this being such a, a brand new unit, especially Krishan, who came in ideally kind of as a weapon X, he played running back in high school. What has been his biggest? transition from the let's do the G in grit and in the growth as he's kind of really learned a uh, a brand new position yeah no he's he's a, a a very talented player a very very talented player and I think the more you can do and the more you can know it makes you a, a better player so uh you know he he got the inexperience rust dusted off his belt in those first two games and and now I don't treat him as a redshirt freshman anymore you know he's a he's a bona fide guy that's made plays and we're, we're counting on him to do that moving forward. Now, obviously we talked a lot about Justin and Krishan, but you mentioned Luke and some of the other guys who have really kind of done that work behind the scenes that you're that we can kind of expect over the next few weeks going, they haven't gotten there yet, but watch out because the, these guys are coming along at a nice clip. Yeah, I think I think Luke um, you know, hasn't hadn't had the production from a num- number standpoint, but he's he's running a lot of winning routes against man coverage. He's uh, assignment sound. I think his touches will come as we continue to progress. Uh, you know, I think more young guys, Dash Dorsey and Jared Kelly and Preston Taylor, and uh, you know, I think our room is deep, and and we'll we'll get into that as the season progresses. We look forward to it, seeing them shine on Saturday against Eastern Michigan. Again, it's a national TV spotlight on CBS Sports. Coach Carney, thank you as always for a few moments of your time. Absolutely, appreciate your time. Go Flashes. Let's take a look at what's going on around Kent State Athletics, brought to you by KSUTix.com. 
It starts on the pitch with our women's soccer team traveling to BG for a Thursday night showdown against Bowling Green at 7 p.m. On Sunday, the soccer team is back at home welcoming in NIU at 1 p.m. It's a doubleheader weekend for field hockey. On Friday, they host the Miami Redhawks at 1 p.m. in the annual Halloween game at Murphy Mellis Field. Then we honor our seniors on Sunday as your Golden Flashes take on Lockhaven at noon. Inside the MAC, our volleyball team has a doubleheader weekend with the Miami Redhawks starting on Friday night at 6 p.m. It'll be a Friday the 13th spooktacular night. And on Saturday, it's Flash's birthday with a 4 p.m. start against the Miami Redhawks. Our Kent State football team is on the road at Eastern Michigan this weekend. It'll be a noon kickoff. You can catch the game on television on CBS Sports Network and on the Kent State Radio Network. And as always, find us on your favorite social media platform at Kent State Athletics. For Kent State tickets, events, and group ticket information, visit ksutix.com. For a look behind the scenes, press conferences, highlights, and more, follow us on YouTube at GFTV. We'll be back with Dr. Sean Broghammer right after this here on Flash Talk. And welcome back inside the GFTV studios. It's Flash Talk. We're brought to you by Brian Heing and Cooling. Danger from bringing in a special guest, Sean Broghammer, our VP for Enrollment Management here at Kent State. And, sir, thank you for a few moments of your time. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Look forward to talking with you. Well, let's just kind of start out right, uh, right from the top. The role that athletics plays in your job and in, in making sure that enrollment is up to date and and the kids are getting an education here at Kent State. Yeah, well, so much about enrollments just being uh, raising awareness, having students learn more about the university, learn more about Kent State, what we have to offer. I think athletics perform, provides uh, an excellent opportunity to, to increase brand awareness so they see us either on TV or on radio, um, hear about us in our local area, but also um, beyond. And so it really helps us attract applications, attract students to consider the university. Yeah, and if, for instance, our, our football team will be pl is played on CBS Sports, played on Fox, will play on ESPN basketball the, the same the same way. So if a fan and a, and a family are, are tuning in on a Wednesday or Saturday afternoon and happens to see Kent State, they may not know much about it. What would you like them to know and how they can find out more information? Yeah, well, I think once we uh, make that connection, um, it's, uh, it's great for them to take a chance to review our website and learn more about the academic programs we offer. Again, first and foremost, that student uh, experience, what we have here at Kent, where we're located. Because I think oftentimes, again, some of the national games we've been a part of, uh, many people don't know where Kent's located. So oftentimes it's realizing our proximity to Cleveland, proximity to Akron, we're really in a a wonderful environment geographically um, and, and where we are. So I think at first glance is just learn more about us. Yeah, and uh, October, obviously a prime time. It's always a time to enroll here at, at Kent State or at least apply to at Kent State, but you guys are doing a, a little something special for those that are going to be applying maybe a, a little early for next year. We are. So we just kicked off this weekend our free application month. So for all high school seniors that are looking to apply to colleges, uh, the application fee is waived. So we're looking forward to students applying. Um, having us uh, as one of their options. Now, you guys obviously don't just stay here at Kent. You go out and, and you see the, the people. So talk a, a little bit about where people can find you. I know there was a college fair here a, a few weeks ago, but you guys are always obviously out and about where and, and recruiting students from all over the place. We are. So we actually have uh, regional counselors based as far as Chicago, down in Charlotte, um, really do a lot in, of course, the state of Ohio. So we do have large events coming up in the Columbus area, down in Cincinnati. Uh, we did have the college fair you mentioned. We had over 1,000 students on campus last week. Um, and then we'll do a lot, of course, in the Western PA uh, as one of our primary recruitment areas. Well, obviously, uh, next year, for those that are uh, not aware, the football team will play at, Pet, uh, at Pitt and at Penn State, easy for, for me to say, but that's got to be a, a great pipeline, a great opportunity for, for you to go out and – kind of see that those worlds kind of collide and intersect. It is. Some of our larger football games the past couple of years have been a little outside of our recruitment footprint, uh, but this definitely brings it closer to home. And so we're looking forward to hosting some events there, uh, not just for the students, but for school counselors. So we like to bring other people in to learn more about the university uh, while we're in the area, kind of piggyback on the, the football game and, and those types of things. Well, that brings me kind of by my next book. One of my good buddies is one of those high school counselors and recruiters. When you guys build a relationship with those high schools, how does that kind of of, uh, how does that relationship develop so you can kind of be the, the voice behind the voice, so to speak? Yeah, I think most importantly, it's about communication. It's about helping keep them informed about any changes at the university, um, 
you know, over the last couple of years, we've had huge changes. We've gone test optional. Uh, again, you'll have things like um, new majors will come online or expansion. Think about the College of Business and what's happening there. Uh, think about our engineering expansion, new building there as well. So really the relationship we have with counselors I think is vital. Um, and that years past, I remember a quote a counselor told me is never underestimate the influence that a school counselor has on a student and a family. Because many of our students are first generation, uh, are the first in the family to go to college. And so oftentimes that's the resource they look to. And so we want to be top of mind for our school counselors. When I, when I talk to coaches, one of the things they always kind of point to is they want cranes on campus. That means that there's things are building, things are expanding. Yeah. We, you, you mentioned some of the expansion that's going on. What are some of the, the exciting things that you're seeing uh, on the horizon here for Kent State? Yeah, I think that's two of them. I think it creates the vibrancy. I think in the last decade, things have changed dramatically with campus and our community. We look at the, the relationship with our uh, campus and our downtown community and the new conference hotel, of course, was built. The revitalization of our downtown. They're really a synergy between the two. Um, so I think that's going for us. Obviously, as you mentioned, the Cranes, Ambassador Crawford College of Business, uh, and that new building, and then our uh, engineering and uh, aeronautics as well. Now, uh, the, the, there's a really quickly just, again, when, when Kent State plays on a national level and you see that, it, that excitement, that national exposure, do you, do you see a, a big uptick or at least some more information being flooded in on, on your back end? Occasionally, we'll see a little uptick on the website. Um, but I think what it really provides is that connection to our alums. It provides connection to students who may be considering, but it's really our alumni base that we want to energize, that we want to have speak on our behalf and talk about their wonderful experience that they had and how much other students would benefit from something similar. Sean Brogammer, VP for Enrollment Management. Thank you for a few moments of your time, and uh, best of luck going forward. Yep, thank you. Appreciate it. Back with more Flash Talk, brought to you by Brian Heing and Cooling, right after this. Welcome back to Flash Talk. We're brought to you by Brian Heing and Cooling. Dan Griffin talking some volleyball with head volleyball coach Haley Eckerman. And, and Coach, uh, back end of a, of a nice homestand. It wasn't the results you guys uh, wanted, but I, I know Mackenzie got a couple of uh, nice games and, and eclipsed a milestone. So some things to celebrate there. Yeah, um, super excited for her. Um, and, and it just shows that the, the athlete that she is, um, that we're you know halfway through her sophomore year and she's already got 500 kills. Um, <laughs> I don't know whether as a coach to be excited about that or you know that means that we're giving her a lot of balls. Um, and so you go back and forth of like, wow, that's great. But then you're like, wow, we're depending on her a lot. Um, but I think it's huge. And and she just continues to get better and, and wants to get better and wants to help this team. And she's one that's just pouring out every single game and is exhausted after every game, too. Um, does a really good job at leaving it all on the floor. It also says something to win. If she is that, that volume scorer for you, that defenses are going to key in on her. And a lot of times it does matter. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can see that the scout plan is always against McKenzie. Um, and, and she's continuing in practice to work on more shots and how to, you know, be still successful um, with knowing that everybody's going to kind of be honed in on her. You know, I think you see it more as she's getting served a lot. And I told her, you know, they're going to pick on you. So trying to get her in that mindset um, to be mentally stable and strong throughout the whole match, um, knowing that they're going to, try to, you know, serve her off the floor and take her out as an offensive option. Yeah, and I mean, it's one thing to serve receive, and then now you're basically in charge of kick-starting that, mm -hmm. that offensive possession. And, and really, like, like you've said, you've, you're looking for this very young team to kind of gain some consistency and, and grow each and every week. And, and a milestone like that, I think, is something that everybody can kind of rally around. Yeah, you know, I think it's huge whenever we can do that. Bryn's coming up um, – on Friday, show she's nine away from a thousand digs. Um, so we're continuing to just grow in those aspects, and I think that that's huge. But um, just being able to showcase it and, and to be a supportive teammate, I think, is big for our team as well. Yeah, and and, and it's going to show again this weekend a lot of. Uh, a, a couple of very cool promotions we've got going on as we welcome in Miami, and that, and again, that's a a rivalry and East Division opponent that you guys. Obviously, every MAC game means more, but something tells me that these East Division games are kind of circled on the calendar a little bit. Yeah, it's one of those that every game we're going to have that target, and I kind of talk to the girls, like, you're either on the hunt or you're the one being hunted, and so you've got to figure out which one you want to be going into every match, and um, Miami is, is an overall good team. You know, their coach has been there for years. Um, she's amazing, and I think she does a really good job at teaching the fundamentals of volleyball. Um, and so it's, it's pretty cool to kind of just be in that environment with her, but also know that they're going to, 
you know, they're looking for a conference win too. Um, and so everybody's kind of got to battle it out, and this weekend's kind of the one for us. Yeah, and it starts at 6 o'clock inside the Mac Center. You're going to see a Friday the 13th kind of Halloween spooky-like feeling. Uh, you and I were talking a little bit before the show that you're you're pretty pumped about Halloween this year because this is the first time in a, while, a long while you actually get to be on the giving instead of the receiving side. Yeah, you know, um, I, I finally am in a house that has a neighborhood of kids. Um, and so when Halloween hits, I'll finally get to, you know, actually hand out candy. Usually we're away um, or um, I was always out trick-or-treating with my son when I was, you know, when he was younger. And so um, it'll be fun to finally get to kind of be on that other side and get to see the excitement of that. I, I know that it's it's one of my son's favorite holidays, um, getting to dress up as your favorite character. And so now kind of getting to be on that side and almost feeling like that adult world now um, <laughs> in a sense, but finally getting to actually be home on a Halloween and, and do that. Well, plus you've also got to do the quality control to make sure the candy is yes. is all right. Is there a go-to... Uh, mom tax or you know this is this is quality control I'm, I'm making sure that the twix is good yeah you know and it's crazy too now that you say like the mom side of it like I kind of got to not being the boring person but like the crackers and like the goldfish and different things now understanding as a parent like some kids are allergic to candy um, I have a goddaughter who is allergic to peanuts and so like now I'm like okay I've got to make sure I can you know have enough for this a kid if they're allergic to this and always having those. So now it's kind of fun of like the shopping piece of what actually candy I'm going to go get. Oh yeah. You get the variety pack and then let them pick out yep. what's best for, uh, for everybody. But then Saturday is Flash's birthday at, at four o'clock. So a lot of things to celebrate. KSUTix.com to come see you guys get a couple of Mac wins. Yes. That's going to do it for this edition of Flash Talk, brought to you by Brian Hing and Cooling. Join us next week when we take another deep dive into the world of Kent State Golden Flashes Athletics. For all of us inside the GFTV studios, this is Dan Griffin saying goodnight and go Flashes. <laughs>